In the last video, we deconstructed the Dawson's Creek Night Vision Ultravision S2000 Infrared Illuminator. Now let's learn how to design and make our own so that people who might not want a picture of Dawson's Creek on their equipment can finally join the ghost hunting community. For the power supply, I'm going to use a 6 volt lead acid battery because that's what I have lying around. There's no reason for the power supply to be mounted in or on our illuminator, so why add weight to your camera? Small light batteries have less capacity than big heavy batteries. These particular batteries are at around 6.8 volts when fully charged, but your mileage may vary. Wherever you buy your LEDs from, you'll need to know a few things. The forward voltage of the LEDs, often labelled as VF. If a range is given, as we see here, use a value between the two given values, in this case 1.45 volts. The forward current of the LEDs, usually labelled IF and given in milliamps. In the case of infrared LEDs, it's also worth knowing that they generally come in two wavelengths, 850 nanometers and 940 nanometers. 850 nanometers will appear brighter, as the camera is more sensitive to this wavelength since it's nearer the visible spectrum. However, 850 nanometer infrared LEDs do give off a faint red glow that is visible to the human eye. If that's not a problem, then use 850 nanometer LEDs. The only reason to use 940 nanometer LEDs is if you don't want to produce any visible light at all. The other consideration is the angle. For our purposes, the wider the angle, the better. So now we can just hook four of these LEDs up to our battery, right? Since it has enough voltage? Not really. As LEDs start to get warm, they start to allow more current through them. As they let more current through them, they get warmer, and so on and so on, until one of the LEDs dies. And when an LED dies, unlike a normal light bulb, it doesn't break the circuit. It has virtually no resistance, so the remaining LEDs have even more current to deal with, and the problem gets worse. Some resistance is required that won't change with temperature. But you can't just use any resistor. This is how to calculate what resistor you need to buy. In our example, we have a supply of 6.8 volts. Each LED drops 1.45 volts on average. We could wire four LEDs in series, which would drop 5.8 volts. 1.45 times 4, 5.8. Leaving one volt, which would need to be dropped by the resistor. Calculating the value of this resistor is simple. We take the remaining voltage to be dropped, 1, and we divide it by the current, in this case 140 milliamps, since four LEDs wired in series draw no more current than a single LED. But to get a value in ohms, and resistors are sold, rated in ohms, we need to convert milliamps to amps. To convert milliamps to amps, just divide it by a thousand. 140 milliamps is 0.14 amps, so our remaining voltage of 1 volt divided by our current of 0.14 amps gives us a resistor value of 7.14 ohms. Resistors also come in different power ratings expressed in watts. To calculate the wattage your resistor must be able to handle, simply multiply the voltage across the resistor this was 1 volt, remember, by the current flowing through the resistor. This is our 0.14 amps. This gives us 0.14 watts, so a quarter watt resistor would be fine. There's no problem with using a resistor rated for more power than it needs to be, other than the physical size of the resistor, which is not a problem here. However, there is no such thing as a 7.14 ohm resistor. We need to use the nearest value above that, which is 7.5 ohms. This circuit will work, but it may not work for long. A good rule of thumb is to ensure that no less than 25% of the voltage is dropped by the resistor. In our example, only 14.7% of the voltage is dropped by the resistor, so we may kill our LEDs, or we may not. This circuit could work just fine for years. If we use three LEDs in series instead of four, the LEDs drop 4.35 volts, leaving 2.45 volts to be dropped by the resistor. This is 36% of the total voltage, so we are wasting energy in the form of heat, but by using a large battery on our belt rather than a tiny battery on the illuminator itself, we still have far better battery life than the Dawson's Creek Night Vision Ultravision S2000. And we can add another string of three LEDs with another resistor in parallel with our first string. In fact, we could add several. How many depends on how much current the power source can supply, and of course, adding more LEDs and more resistors will drain the battery faster. 
but he still lasts longer than the Dawson's Creek Night Vision Ultravision S2000. Just bear in mind that the law of diminishing returns comes into effect when you keep adding LEDs. So now you know how easy it is. Go out and make your own infrared illuminators and sell them for 90 bucks. Mm -hmm.